Hey everybody, this is kind of an inductor, in, <laughs> induction, forced induction video. Uh, this is kind of an introductory video on how turbos work. Ryan's Mobile One. Turbos work because there's a bar going through here that connects the exhaust turbine to the intake turbine. So on this one, the input and output on it uh, it feeds in on this side directly in line with the thing to spool it up. This is being pushed by the turbine. This is pushing the turbine. It's right in line with the thing. And then this is the exhaust. This goes out to your exhaust pipe and then eventually your tailpipe. Uh, so when you look at this, you'll notice exhausts aren't painted because it burns the paint off. So we have cast iron on this side and then we have an aluminum or an alloy on this side, you'll notice that this side's really fat and this side's kind of skinny. Uh, there's a reason for that. The way that the turbo works is it connects the exhaust gases, which are more plentiful and abundant because when you think about it, an internal combustion engine doesn't explode because that force moves on the pistons, the pistons move the crankshaft and so on and so forth. Uh, on the intake side, it'll go in on this here and then it'll go out here. And the whole point of this turbine is imagine like a drill on a compactor uh, that uses a turbine to compress the air. I mean, that's what it does. You're compressing, you're packing the air down. You've heard of turbos. You've seen the little emblem on the back of a car. You know, it's turbo. Well, this is what the turbo is. And the way it works is it forces air down the intake. That makes the engine able to accelerate faster and produce more power. Uh, an engine, uh, I've talking to crew chiefs on a, on a NASCAR team for Team Penske. Uh, they're saying every engine is an air pump. And what he means by that is that it, it uh, sucks in air, there's a vacuum uh, that pulls in air just like a syringe. Everybody's played with something like this at some point or another, but think of this as the piston connected to the crankshaft. So a four stroke engine has four strokes. There's the intake or suck, uh, and then the intake valve closes, and then there's the compression or squeeze, and it gets up to the top to where you've got all of this volume of air that's compacted down to this much, okay? So when you go to pull in the air, the air has a little bit of resistance on it. If you force the air down, it pushes it down, there's less resistance, so you can go faster. When you squeeze it, uh, let's see if I let off it'll go puff. When you squeeze it, I wish you could see through a thermal camera that it actually superheats that air. That's the principle that diesels fire by. They get air all squeezed to the top and then they squirt in using high pressure because this air is already high pressure. See it doesn't want to be there. Uh, it'll squirt diesel into that and BAM it'll shove it back down at the same time that the crankshaft moves around and the connecting rod moves around and it'll power the crank to turn in the direction that it's turning. So the way a turbo works is it forces the air down so that it works faster. Now bear in mind when things go, uh, so you compress it and then you go bang either with a spark plug or with a spray of diesel, uh, it goes BAM! It forces it back down. And bear in mind that we had a compressed volume of air and then we expanded, we forced it violently down because it expands when it burns. Uh, hot things expand, uh, things that are compressed get hot, so you got a double hot of expanded gas that goes out the turbo, so there's more going out on the exhaust side than there is going in on the intake side. And it's able to do it faster because we're shoving it. Uh, because there's so much hot, accelerated, expanded air going on this side, uh, when it turns this, it actually uh, packs it just like a turbine on a dam. Uh, down the intake hole and makes it so that your pistons don't have to pull. When you feel vacuum, like if you put your hand on, a, on an intake or a carburetor, it'll suck your glove or it'll suck things in. You've heard of vacuum leaks and you've seen a throttle. Vacuum on a gasoline engine goes to zero when you're at wide open throttle because there isn't that restriction. With a turbo, you're overcoming that resistance uh, by forcing air down it. Turbos have a lag because they have to wind up, they have to speed up, and it takes a little bit to move them.
the mass of the turbines in the shaft to get that all going. But once that gets going, I mean, it's like a vicious cycle that can just really take off if left at wide open throttle. Turbines turn at a really high speed to do what they're doing. Uh, in order to keep them cool when that's happening because there's so much of that hot exhaust being you know expelled it's not just the the lazy days of coal, you know like normal process it's like being forced through and as a result this side can get really really hot you see evidence of that in this heat shield you see evidence that there's no paint and it's all rusty uh, in order to keep that cool you either have to run oil like for example this one has an oil cooler where oil goes down through here and comes out through there and then drains back into the engine just like if you're to pour oil in a valve cover and let it drain down to the oil pan that's what this guy does is it just drains that off and it helps to serve as a barrier so that the bearings and all the seals and everything for that shaft because you, you can imagine it turning at tens of thousands of rpms this thing has to be supported and looped and it also has to be cooled so that's why they have this in the middle a lot of turbos will also have some kind of supplementary cooling device uh, that helps in, in, in addition to that. On the intake side of the turbo, we talked about the exhaust side driving it, but what we didn't talk about, we talked about the size difference. Look at the size difference between this opening for the intake and this opening for the charging discharge of the air into the intercooler. The intercooler uses those same principles just like a diesel fires from compressing really hard and uh, superheating the air and then squirting diesel into it to make it go bang. Uh, an intercooler cools down the air by taking all of this and it gets a little bit of hot from this and it gets a little bit of heat from compressing it. It cools it and dense, it makes the air more dense in the intercooler going out to the front of the vehicle. So this is the input, this is the output. You can see the size of this and the size of this diameter. So that would make it hotter, but then it cools it back off through the intercooler and then from the intercooler, boop, right down it gets shoved down at however many psi of boost you're running down the intake now you've heard of blow off valves blow off valves basically divert the effect of the exhaust by making it uh, go to the bypass the turbine basically and just go to that that's an easier one to show on a subaru uh, here's a picture of what that looks like so this is the outlet side of my turbo uh, the exhaust comes up through here uh, behind the wastegate and spins that little turbine right there. That turbine's connected to another scroll wheel that forces air into the intake. So when the exhaust goes through this, it goes out through that turbine. And then if you don't want it to go through there, you open up the valve right here. It opens up just like a bank vault door in a cartoon or something. When it opens, it sends the exhaust straight out the exhaust pipe instead of up and around and uh, turning up the turbine and coming through those impellers that you see there. You'll notice that this turbo doesn't have a blow-off valve. It actually has an actuator that controls vanes on the inside of it that look something like this. They can open and close, uh, which serves the same function. It gives you a little bit more control, but that's something for another video. Instead of going to the turbine, it takes a shortcut and just goes right into the exhaust pipe. So on this one, the input and output on it uh, it feeds in on this side directly in line with the thing to spool it up. This is being pushed by the turbine. This is pushing the turbine. It's right in line with the thing. And then this is the exhaust. This goes out to your exhaust pipe and then eventually your tailpipe. This is a crash course in how turbos work. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you gained some understanding from it. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And uh, myself or someone in the B-Mob will B-Mob your question and uh, answer it for you. A lot of smart guys on this channel. I'm making the videos. Uh, you know, I've been able to build this up through a lot of work on my own efforts, but there's a lot of guys out there that are smarter than I am uh, that would be happy to pitch in on your questions too. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thought I'd do something different with the end cards by leaving some of these attraction uh, sayings. Two souls don't find each other by simple accident. What you seek is seeking you. Another one that I couldn't find the text for is when the student's ready, the teacher will be found. Uh, be such a beautiful soul that people crave your vibes. If you ever feel like you're lonely or upset or negative, uh, just remember that one. The quality of your life is directly related to the quality of your thoughts, words, food, sleep, fitness, purpose, environment, and relationships. You can control that.